the Digi Podcast, Digital Trends in Supply Chain Management. Hello and welcome to our Digi Podcast. I'm Thomas Olzer from Siemens SCM Digi Network with the Digi Podcast, a podcast on digital and innovative topics for procurement in the future. Digitalization is becoming increasingly important for every company. At Siemens in particular, digitalization is a fundamental element for success. But how is digitalization practiced at Siemens Supply Chain Management? What do we focus on? The aspect of digital transformation and innovation is particularly close to our hearts. In our podcast, we highlight different aspects and share best practices with various digital experts and listen to their stories. For this episode, I invited Sönke Hodge. Together with the Digi Network, Sönke has further developed a solution how supplier collaboration can realistically take place in the course of the new virtual reality, and this now and also in future. Hello, Sönke. Nice to have you with us. Hi, Thomas. Thanks for having me. So, Sönke, how does it happen that you came into the digital arena? Yeah, actually, you know, Thomas, I am a sort of trained commodity management employee. So I started in strategic procurement in um, what's now called Siemens Gamesa. And two and a half years ago, I got the opportunity to um, go into Siemens corporate and work on digitalization and digital innovation. And I've been doing that now for the for the last two and a half years, as I said, um, working on various topics such as machine learning, RPAs, but also virtual collaboration. Sounds interesting, but the topic of today is something totally new, what I'm experiencing. So it's about a new approach of supply collaboration. How did it come? Exactly. So roughly half a year ago, I think, we first discovered that there's tools um, for virtual collaboration outside of the ones that we know, such as Teams, such as Zoom, such as Skype, but rather um, tools that use virtual avatars, which you can imagine a bit like a computer game. So you walk around in a three-dimensional environment. You are in, in the first person view of a, of a three-dimensional avatar in this space, and you walk around in an environment. Of course, this came um, in a phase where COVID was very much prevalent I mean, it still is. But of course, that was especially important because we realized we cannot meet our suppliers right now in person. Um, so we need to find other ways. And uh, TriCat, the, the tool that uses those virtual avatars, was a very good um, alternative here that we discovered. Oh, sounds interesting. It's like, like Counter-Strike Go for procurement. What's different to Teams? Yeah, so as I mentioned, um, it's it's avatar-based and it's three-dimensional. So anyone who's played Sims before um, or other computer games, you know, Second Life, Unreal Tournament, um, what what they're called, has had that experience of you know running around in a in a three-dimensional space, and that is the big difference. So you sort of have a sense of a physical environment, and I think that's the biggest difference. Really, you don't need VR uh, headsets or augmented reality glasses or anything like that. A normal computer does the job perfectly fine. But what you need really is to be open-minded to try this because it is different than um, using Teams. It is quite immersive. And uh, as I mentioned, you, you sort of run around in this in this environment. And that's the that's the new element, really. So you said immersive. So this means I don't, like in Teams, some people are taking care of their cats or they're doing emails in parallel. This means immersive. It's not possible. Or is this uh, something that is also an aspect of TriCat? Well, I think you can try, even even with TriCat, uh, you can try to take care of your cat. That's a good play on words, but it, it is much more challenging. It's definitely more immersive in the sense that uh, you need to pay more attention. You are a part of a meeting. Imagine you're sitting in a meeting room and all of a sudden um, you decide to look into your emails. Usually people will notice that, right? And it's similar to that in TriCat. You have a sense of a physical meeting. Um, and that's the big difference also to teams where you can switch off your camera, mute your microphone, and all of a sudden you're basically out of the meeting, right? But it sounds interesting. So this means during a meeting, I can also go for a coffee with a friend or with a colleague or with a supplier. Exactly. And that's also the beauty. I mean, in Teams, you also have uh, breakout sessions, right? But breakout sessions in TriCat mean walking to a different room with your avatar. 
And of course, that also means you can grab a colleague or a supplier and say, hey, let's go into the other room. Um, I want to talk to you about something. And that's very much possible in TriCat and also one of the good use cases. One important thing to mention is, um, you know, TriCat is a great tool, but it's not necessarily a great tool for all use cases. So there is certain aspects um, and, and certain use cases that are definitely ideal for TriCat, but TriCat is not the solution for everything, right? So really, one of the biggest advices from my side is if you want to use TriCat, think about the use case that you want to actually implement um, with the tool and think about whether the positive aspects of TriCat can benefit that use case. You are here because you also, uh, say, practice some use cases. So maybe you can share shortly which kind of use cases you have had so far and what are the takeaways of these use cases? Yeah, sure. I mean, like any new tool, um, we started out by testing it, right? And the first tests were simply some internal team meetings with a small group of five people. Then we realized, hey, this is actually quite cool and it works. Um, so I decided to conduct a machine learning tutorial in TriCat. So I presented some basic fundamental information about machine learning. Then we had some breakout sessions and ideation sessions to come up with new ideas on machine learning. And we developed um, use cases for machine learning and supply chain management. And all that happened in TriCat. And then we said, well, if it works so well internally, why don't we use it also with our suppliers, right? So um, since then, we conducted two bigger supplier days with groups of 20 and up to almost 50 people. One supplier day was with one supplier only. The second supplier day was with two suppliers. And for anyone who works in supply chain management, that, of course, brings with it a whole new range of challenges in terms of confidentiality and communication, etc. Um, but we managed quite well. Um, and having conducted that pilot phase now um, enables us to say, hey, it works. The demand from the business is there and we want to push forward. So now we're going into the phase of getting TriCat certified and making it available um, to the greater Siemens audience as well. Well, sounds great. This means the phase of blood, sweat and tears is gone and you are coming to the fun phase. Exactly. Yeah, that's the plan. So thanks for this nice overview. I think the people will come back to me and to you about this machine learning topic. I think that's worth to have another podcast with you to go into details for procurement guys, but not for today. But before we get to an end of this podcast, maybe you spend also some words about who is Sönke. Yeah, okay, good. In terms of um, my professional life so far, I mean, I've been working in commodity management, as I mentioned in the beginning. So quite a, a background in strategic procurement. I then transferred to the digitalization and supply chain management team that I work for today. And in that role, I think there were a lot of interesting projects, all the way from machine learning, artificial intelligence, then also looking into RPAs, so robotic process automation. And um, th there we are building a cool tool called Lotti, which is a lot size optimization tool. I'm also um, looking at or developing actually a what we called Startup Radar um, together with a colleague where we are trying to, to sort of gather all this knowledge within Siemens about startups that we've worked with so far, startups that we know. So really anything related to virtual collaboration, digitalization in supply chain management is what I'm trying to push forward in our Siemens environment. So it sounds very promising for the future. It means broad scope. And uh, I'm totally convinced that we hear and meet sooner or later together. Thanks a lot for taking time and sharing your knowledge. Thanks for having me, Thomas. Have a good day. And to all our listeners, if you have questions, please contact us and otherwise look forward to the next episode of the Digit podcast. Thanks for joining us. Yours, Thomas Holzner. Goodbye. The Digi Podcast, digital trends in supply chain management.